probably not timely considering, you know, great chase there at the end, but with Duckworth Lewis in T20, do you think it's too advantageous for the chasing teams? Um, I'm not sure, because I've got no idea how Duckworth Lewis <laughs> works, but uh, I think I think generally it does um, suit the team batting second, just because it gives you, you know exactly what you have to do. Um, and obviously whenever they're shortening the target and shortening the overs, you've still got your wickets in hand. So there's a, there is a slight advantage there. Um, but I mean, yeah, to, I think 62 or 5 was a pretty fair summation of where that game was at. Um, George, obviously a disappointing match for a number of reasons, but a little bit of tension at the end there when the players were walking off. Can you sort of tell us what um, what that was about? Well, I can't because I wasn't out there, but I'm passionate, mate. That's, that's the, I think people care about the game and care about the way they play, and um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's it. Um, I know we get along very well with this side, so and even just the, the chats there coming off, I think it's all just heat of the moment stuff, but I think what you're seeing is individuals and teams that are pretty keen to win. Was an issue with Sri Lanka's overrate or anything since the resumption? Oh, there might have been. I'm, I'm sure if the umpires were all over that, if, if, if that's the case, but um, I certainly wasn't, wasn't looking at any of that sort of stuff, no. And um, I suppose the last five overs of the Sri Lankan innings, is that fair to say that that's where, where it really got away? Yeah, it, hurt, it certainly hurt us, because um, we've been very good up until then, and it was... Um, Laid out, and, and I guess that's the, the, the contrasting um, finishes. The way they bowled to us in Sydney, their last four overs, and, and our last four overs is a um, that's probably the gap between the best team in the world at T20 and the seventh best or whatever we are. So um, hopefully we'll learn a lot about that. Um, I think we've got some bowlers in our side that can be world class at T20. There's great foundations there. You know, I thought James Faulkner was really good tonight. Uh, Mitchell Stark's been outstanding. Um, Glenn Maxwell's you know, two back-to-back -back games have been really, really good with the ball. So um, there's some good stuff there. And you know, even the rest, yeah, up until the 15th over, were, were very good. So um, it's just, there's a huge opportunity there for, for a bowler to step up. And not only for T20, I think if a, if a bowler can step up and nail their death stuff, I think they're almost walking into our one-day side as well. So um, you know, if I, was a, if I was a bowler, it'd have to be a you know, a huge um, source of excitement. You know, something certainly to to be working towards. You gave Ben another goal at the end today. Was that I know he had the bad game in Sydney. Was that sort of more so a recognition that you know he'd been probably one of, if not the best Australian death bowler during the Big Bash. That's why you went back to him. Yeah, that's what he's in the side for. He's in the side to um, to to do what Lassith Malinga does for them. Um, to be able to um, to be able to. Nail his death stuff um, to be able to be hard to hit through the middle with his change ups. Um, he's got you know great amount of variation, but um, you know let's see if we'll tell you the same thing. If you're not still putting the ball where you want, then um, at this level certainly you'll you'll be made to pay. Um, I, and I still think Benny's got the skills to do it, so it's nice that he's had a look um, at international level and and um, and knows exactly what he has to maybe go away and work on or what he has to. You know, how he has to find a way to relax so he can execute as well as he did during yeah. the domestic stuff. And would you envisage much of a change to the squad, perhaps even like with looking for that death bowler or death bowlers for that one-off T20 game in a couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, not sure. Not sure at, at this stage. We'll, I mean, we'll look, at, we'll look at that, and I'm only a, a small part in that whole selection cog. But, um, but I was really happy with this squad two games ago. Um, I think it's got everything we need within it. Um, so the opportunities are there. Um, guys have had that opportunity. Hopefully, they will get another one, um, and they can show us exactly what they need to do. Otherwise, we'll, we have, we're back to the drawing board to find it. But I think structure-wise, we're finding what we need in our T20 side. Um, it's just a matter of, of bridging that gap between the best and the and us. Um, and it's not big stuff. I mean, it's particularly in T20, it's it's minuscule things that that turn their 160 into 140, and then we're chasing you know, 40 there or whatever, you know, however that might work. There's a myriad of things that can change, obviously. Great. Yeah, I guess just further to that next game, uh, that one-off game, is that a developmental thing or are you trying to work more on the squad you've got? And uh, how, how's your foot? Because you look like you were limping during the rain delay and then you were running around when you came out to bat again. So was that adrenaline or how is your foot? Yeah, it's just sore. Um, <laughs> But it'll be fine. It's not broken or anything. I think it'll be the more you stop, the more it'll the more it'll hurt. But 
yeah, no problems running and it'll be it'll be fine. Um, and what was the first bit? The team. Oh, I, I don't, honestly don't know. I don't know what. As I said, I'm on one part of of that. We I know what we don't have, and that's many T20 games until we start looking at saying to build that squad up for the 2014 World Cup, which sounds a long way away, but that's maybe, I don't know, eight or nine games. Um, no, so it's not, in terms of games, it's not that many. I'd like to start nutting, nutting that down. So if there are changes, I wouldn't envisage there'd be many. I guess just, just other one, George, you know, since, you know, the, the past Australian summer you've had, you know, the end of the World T20 when you had, you know, that sort of standout innings there in the semi-final, had another sort of beginnings today. I know you wouldn't, you know, never had any doubts about your own position in the team, but are you feeling more confident about your position in the team now because of you've also got runs on the board as well as having it at domestic level? Um, no, it doesn't change. You, whether you're captain or not the captain, if you're picked as a batter, you've got to score runs. Uh, that's, that's a really simple Simple equation. I'm actually kicking myself about the way I batted, I reckon. Well, in any game like that, there's always about 50 things you do differently, isn't there? Not running one short would be the first thing, I reckon. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to get runs every game I play. Whether I'm captain, whether I'm playing for Australia, that's just... My job is, as a batsman, that's my number one job in cricket, is to score runs. Yeah, of course, it was very pleasing, you know. Um, uh, you know, at the start of the series, we were never, you know, planning of... Um, or rather thinking of the ratings, we just wanted to go out there and you know enjoy and try and you know play to our potential, which we did. So yeah, it was very pleasing. Uh, traditionally, um, touring teams have come to Australia and maybe started a little bit slower um, and got better as the, as the, as the tour has gone on. Um, that's happened to you guys as well, finishing strongly with the, the whitewash in the 2020s. What do you put that down to and do you think you could do anything, anything different in, in the future to change that? Well, to be honest, yeah, it was a disappointing, you know, start of the series. Uh, um, you know, especially in the test series, we were not up to those standards at all. And and I thought we picked up in the ODIs and the 2020s. So, uh, yes, we got to think, think hard, and you know, uh, if you know, if necessary, we should try and change um, some sort of thinking. Or I, I, you know, really can't summarize it, but. You know, we got to see, um, uh, adapt to the situations, conditions, and and bouncy wickets. So, you know, it's it's pretty hard, but but the boys did uh, well towards the latter part. Um, to sort of, uh, bowling that last over, uh, I guess you you would have felt quite confident at the start of the over. Did you sort of need to you know stop and uh, settle a little bit <laughs> part way through when they'd hit a few boundaries? Yeah, I'm really exciting. Uh, you know, as a bowler, you know, I'm. I know I can do it uh, uh, everything uh, as a bowler. Uh, that's why I'm trying to bowl the Yorkers. Uh, after that, uh, two boundaries, and I'm also very excited. And everyone come and, uh, and advise me do it that one, do it this one. And after that, uh, Angie said, uh, do it uh, my own things. You know, you, you have confidence. Uh, after that, you can go for it. <laughs> So, Angela, the, the conference sort of before that last ball, what, what was the, um, you know, there were a few different voices there uh, trying to come up with the plan? Yeah, I was a bit nervous, you know. Uh, uh, all the guys got a bit excited and, and just wanted to keep it calm there and just told Tisar to, you know, go go for what his, uh, you know, instincts say. Because he's the bowler, he's going to do it. So, uh, I thought he bowled a brilliant over in the last game because you... Uh, in a 2020 20, 16 runs you know it's it, it, you know it's sort of easy for the batting team so so i thought he pulled a you know brilliant last over uh, considering the fact that it was demanding conditions as well so you couldn't really hold on to the ball it was not gripping so it was wet the outfield was wet uh, so uh, it was not easy but i thought uh, you know he bowled a uh, brilliant over um australia have that uh, that attitude of of getting in the face of the opposition and there was a lot of sort of tension between the two sides before that last ball was bowled. How, how did events sort of unfold after that? Do you think that's just part of, you know, the adrenaline of the game or was it disappointing the way things unfolded there with the handshakes and the arguments? No, to be honest, you know, it, it, it was just the heat of the moment, you know. Uh, you know, things happen, uh, you know, exchange a few words. They played hard, we played hard. So that's it. I mean, you, you know, after the game, we are friends.